still actually counted as a full. You think so? <laughs> We're now on YouTube. Right. Right. All right. <laughs> Oh, night's on. I need to worry about that. Really quiet. Yeah. <laughs> hello, 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 hello. I can hear you. I think it's through his main mic though. Oh. oh. Huh. Hello? Hello? Oh yeah, I can hear yeah. it now. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> is everybody ready? The time is 7 p.m. Today is Wednesday, May 11, 2022, and the Wiggins Board of Trustees work session is now in session. First agenda topic is discussion of change to water conservation policy outside watering rules. Okay. I was hoping, and I hope he shows up, my cohort in crime, Bo, will show up, but I think I can cover it alone. Um, staff is making this recommendation uh, for two reasons. One is it's... As you all know, it's been very, very dry, and it's probably going to continue to be dry this summer, lack of rain. So we need to be good stewards of water resources. And many communities have gone to this type of scheme for years. In fact, I've been doing it for 10 plus years at my lawn, watering every other day. Um, or odd even in resting on Sunday. It gets, it takes some time to get used to it, um, but it is probably better for your lawns as well because your grass can grow deeper roots um, and things of that nature. And the mayor may be able to speak to that as well or add to it since he's in the industry. Um, second, reason for doing it is until we can get the tank, the second tank in, installed. Um, last summer, we had a period of June, July, and August that we were running the RO pumps pr pretty much 24-7 to try to keep up with the demand. Um, bringing, we were using more water in town than we can bring in at the same time. So the tank needed to recover. Um, this year will not probably not be any different, especially as hot as it's gotten and as dry as it's getting. We are changing out the filter media in the RO and that should help. Um, we need to, we, it's, at its end of its lifespan. And we've also changed the um, size of it. So the pressure drop through the RO should be less, which will allow us to pump a little bit more. Um, I am in hopes and I'll cover it later that we can start on the design and working on the tank sometime this year and get that tank installed. But it takes a full year to get a tank installed from what I've been told from the construction and the epoxy and the coats and stuff like that. Um, so um, I think this is an action that we should consider and, and it's what staff has proposed. Additionally, to help alleviate some of the demand on the system, we're putting together cost and I'll bring it back to the board because we'll need to do a budget amendment, but laying 
our version of non-potable line from the South Wells into town for the parks and for the school's ball fields. What we're comparing right now is do we do a inexpensive workable pipe that is our equivalent, a non or a purple pipe, or do we put in more of a drinking water quality pipe now with so that we have the potential in the future to blend the Kiowa Bijou water with South Platte water in the future. That gives us the maximum flexibility, but the price may be so much that we decide we don't want to do that, but we want to have that comparison. Um, and the cost difference would be in the pipe itself. Labor would be about the same. Um, and if we're going to do pot, potable water, I think we'd have to bury the line right away. If we do non-potable, I've seen water lines laid on top of the ground for a period of time, and we could do it at a slower rate to bury the pipeline. So those are things that we're considering to lessen the, the demand on the RO and on the tank. Additionally, as you all are aware, we're selling quite a bit of bulk water right now. We think the heaviest user will be finished in two weeks or so is what they've told us. Um, but in, in addition, we are piping the south well to where it can be used as a bulk water station so that if folks need bulk water and it's in the Kiowa Bijou well field or Kiowa Bijou district, they'll use the south wells. And we're also looking at piping a bypass at the RO that we can use non-treated water from the well field for bulk water out of areas that are not in the Kiowa Bijou, or if there's a fire call, have the fire district go to that, um, to the RO plant as well. And then Bo, Mark and I have talked about the potential of could the fire district put a tank at the district with um, potable water and use, you know, either the Kiowa Bijou wells or the South Platte wells to fill using their trucks. Just an idea that we are exploring. Um, so with that, I will answer any questions that you might have. What's, uh, how is our, wasn't we going to have an interconnection with uh, quality water? I hope we have that this summer. Again, I was going to give that update at a later date, but I can give it now. Um, Josh Cook with Northern Engineering, who is Morgan County Quality Waters Engineer, is confirming what I've put together as a equipment list so I can get bids on that. He's already got bids on the valve itself for me. He's reviewing that and I should have that by the end of the week. And then I need to confirm with Kent if I need to go out to bid for the installation, like use Ransom Boone or someone like that, or can they do that install for me this summer? We've already identified the location and I know it's a previous location, but High Street and Corona, we cross right over their line that that location, so that makes it easy. I can talk to Kent to you tomorrow night. Okay. <laughs> uh, what's what's going to be tough is with with trying to pass something for water conservation, and I I strongly believe in it. But when these, how, how many gallons does one of them trucks hold? It's going to be tough for the people to accept that if they see a truck down here drawing water off of a hydrant. I'm just. And how many times do they fill a day? And we get $12 per thousand gallon of revenue off of those trucks.
And what's the agreement there? So after the two weeks, we're not going to have that. Okay. And we may have some, we've got um, Robert JD1 is going to be doing a pipeline project and uh, one of the dairies north of town is doing some um, work where they're pulling bulk water as well. Um, and then periodically we have small users um, and that's just a fact of life. But we can, the board can decide if they want, we have, we could curtail that and they'd have be forced to go elsewhere. But I think where that, that 50, where's that 50,000 going to go? It goes into the water fund. Which maintenance or future? Right now, it goes into the fund as a whole, and I use it for future and or uh, maintenance, and it's what would help pay for, or actually could probably pay for our improvements that we want to do at the RO in the South Wells and bring in the pipe up uh, from the South Wells for the uh, watering the parks and the ball fields. Well, that's our argument. So from... What I saw, the ordinance that was signed in 2015, the only real difference I see on what you propose now is the time change from 10 a.m. to 9 a.m., so 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Correct. And then taking out Sundays. And also making a permanent fixture, not an um, emergency or a raise the green flag. It would always be in place. That would be the rules of the town so to speak that you always water every or odd even depending on your house number from here on out it doesn't change back to you can water any time that you want to well and i i think a lot of the new people that when i set their clock up i set it up to water what if their house is an odd number they water monday wednesday friday if it's an even they water tuesday thursday saturday and i don't put any time on Sunday or anything between nine and six. And I strictly tell them, look, there, this is how it is. And they, I have, have not ran into anybody that's put up any fight. You know, you, I mean, that's, you gotta, that's, that's the way I've had my, yeah. Setup. And it, it just puts it in, in All the we're doing law. Is putting it is writing. And, right. Yeah. Enforcing it. Right. Cause the 2015 ordinance, there's not much different from what's being proposed now. Right. Right. Yeah, I, just a few slight changes. I, I, you know, I had talked to you on this a little bit earlier in regards to like the four days a week situation, like the Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday deal. But again, just hearing you talk about this and how it's probably not going to make a major impact in terms of your lawn's ability to grow. And it is water conservation and it will help your water bill. Well, so and it's, I guess there's, there's not necessarily a negative there anyway. There's some other alternative, you know. Yeah. Aerating your yard is really good for it. Yeah. Um, fertilizing your yard will really help your yard. Um, it's it's all it all can be taken. I, you could water two days a week and maintain a nice right. green yard. And a lot of people yeah. cut their grass too short and they need to cut that longer. Yeah. And it'll it'll stay greener. I leave my grass at the highest uh, setting my mower can do. And I think we can also put out through the newsletter some education material like that and then trustee flax had a good suggestion and there's a state a bill going through the legislature i don't know if it's been signed by the governor but paying people or assisting people to plant to do zero escape not zero escape but zero escape you know water wise plants get rid of the bluegrass because Bluegrass is the worst thing in this arid environment. What, buffalo grass? That's better. In fact, that's what uh, Kent Lindell's got at the Colorado land, and I think it looks great. And there's a grass turf farm. Well, Bigfoot grass, a lot of them sell it. It's a hybrid now. It's a cross between a Texas fescus and a Kentucky bluegrass, and that's all I'll put in. Yeah. And it does way better in drier climate and it's better for, you know, traction tolerance with kids and dogs and stuff like that. And that's what I have. And that's all I'll put in. And it does great with just three days a week of watering. Okay. 
put a lot, 99% of the people in uh, Wiggins have bluegrass. Yeah. No, yeah. No, that's, no doubt. it was the thing easy to plant, easy to take care of, and it stood up to use. That's why it was a, put in a lot of places. What is what is the watering schedule for like the ballpark and the school? Because I see the school water all the time. Can you answer that? Oh, he you might need that mic. Yeah, he's gonna need that mic. Oh, there you go. Histor okay. Historically, the school and the parks have watered up to every day from six at night until 10 in the morning because there's so much area to cover. We try at the parks to stagger the start times of the water so I don't put so much demand on the water plant all night long. We'll start one or two other parks at six and then start another park at 9.30 or 10. And then by the time the first one's going off, we'll start another park or another strip of grass. But historically, we've always watered every day if the weather really turns hot. Uh, we just got the um, sprinklers on at the parks in the last couple of days, and uh, you'll see them green up, but as it stands, we're gonna water every other day until the weather really heats up. But uh, the town, it's my understanding that the town has allowed us to water every day, primarily because you get so much additional foot traffic at the parks. As an example, they're playing ball games several nights a week. We've got people playing soccer on the soccer field out in front of the amphitheater several nights a week, and we just get a lot more wear and tear than the average residence does. Yeah. But that's the other reason why Tom had asked about the idea of maybe putting the school and the, the town parks on the non-potable water, because that takes the load off of the domestic water system. And, and, I, and I think that's a great I'm, I'm all for that. Yeah. And in my opinion, I think we need to do it right the first time. That way, if we get to that point where we can put the whole town on it, we're not backtracking and spending more money to well, well, catch back what up. What is the, the law? You can't run them in the same ditch, can you? Non-pot and pot water. Maybe. You know, I'd have to look into that, but... I think it's got to have a certain... I know, with, I, know, I know with sanitary, you've got to have a certain distance. The beauty of laying the potable water type pipe the first time, it can run. It's not, it's going to be non potable until it gets to the booster station and is treated anyway and put into a blending station. So we don't need to put two pipes in. We could run the same pipe and just tee off where we want the park water to be and where we want the ball field water. Before it hits, um, I think it would be sand filters of a certain type to get rid of the manganese and the nitrate. Here, oh, so the RO system here in town, that the one, the future. Either the future or just a night, just a sand filter, not an RO filter. For the, I'm having samples taken of the south wells to confirm what the levels are of nitrate manganese and iron to see if we could just get away with a plain simple what i call a simple sand filter what like green sand yeah like green sand and leave potentially leave the ro where it's at and save that expense of moving it and constructing a new ro plant or moving the RO plant and then adding on to it here, just add on to it down there. And I, and I've seen the chief and Doug and Robbie out talking to residents that are watering outside of the watering time. So it's good to see them enforce that. Cause it's just, when you water, it's a hundred degrees out. You're really doing nothing but evaporating the water off the right. ground. So, and the, the wind's blowing fifty miles. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> when do you water then? <laughs> you don't. <laughs> yeah, you don't. You live with brown grass. Yeah. Well, you know, if you in that situation, if you water, it's not any of your grass anyway, depending on where it's at. I salt the neighbor water. 
Yeah. My, my neighbor's been watering mine for like weeks now. <laughs> so I got a question as far as bringing that um, that water from the the uh, uh, Platte Basin or not the Platte um, Calabijou. Um, is it a requirement to have it as a uh, drinking water pipe if it's coming up um, to a filter station um, for potable purposes after the filter station? Or does it, or can it be like the purple pipe to the filter station? And then after that be the, potable? you know, it's a good thought. And I, can't answer that, but I will find out the answer. So I was just curious. we'll look into that. Maybe we could kind of mix and match if that's allowed. We may we may be able to do that. So you know, I know that if it's effluent, like from a wastewater treatment plant, it's got to be purple pipe. Okay. And and we don't have that luxury because we're using the effluent in the future to augment our water directly from the South Platte. Right. So, but we'll look into that. Okay. And there's pipe been available? Hmm. Oh, that's the other $10,000 question. <laughs> so the only thing I guess I have is in here, it says um, if we get to like a red zone, the all residential would be cut off from water but the park and the school could still water. I think we would run into huge issues with residents because it, it's a lot of money when you put landscaping in. And if you can't water your grass and the school's over there watering their baseball and football field, I think you could start some trouble. And I can agree with that at the same point. I would make could make the argument that if you allow and have green green space in town that everyone can use it serves the function but i threw that in there for discussion and if it was an extreme crisis by all means i would suggest to the board that we curtail all of our watering as well all right yeah because i think the i don't think you can get into the school it's locked as far as i know you can't get in if you wanted to play on the field or whatever yeah so the park would be the only place it would have a common area would you would you accept it if i reworded it to say park only and put that explanation in it as a for consideration that hey it's providing some place for people to recreate no, uh, yeah, I agree. I, I think it's all up to everybody. We have to all agree on it. I just thought with the school being in there, I think they pay the same price as any resident, if right. I'm correct, right? So if you're telling me I can't water, but the school can, well, I'm going to water. Okay. <laughs> I put in landscaping and it wasn't cheap. Okay. And I'm willing to pay the water bill, so. So I guess it would, we would all have to agree upon it. It's just right. I, I did see in there that I thought was kind of maybe the wording just wasn't correct. Well, at one time they did shut the school off, didn't they? Nor, Norm, Norm from Empire Dairy was hauling water in to keep the football field. And if you recall, Peach Park was killed off during the year and a half that we were building the RO plant. Yeah, I would explain that. Okay. Yeah. Bill Rogers killed that off. Bill Rogers killed that off so we could get in the South Platte game. I mean, that's the bottom line. I was on the council then. I, I would uh, suggest when you look at this, and I'm looking at the extreme water conservation schedule, it's not that it specifically says that you can still water the parks. But not res but residents can't water their own property. It just doesn't. It needs to be clarified. Right. There's not just nothing in here. So it's more just a a statement. I think will suffice. Other than that, I uh, I don't know how, how the rest of the board feels. I feel pretty good about what's in here. You might want to reword C. I don't know what, if he's gonna go around page? governing the toilet. C. Huh? C on what's which page? page? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who's gonna govern the toilets and bathtubs running? 
Oh, are you talking about under the uh, uh, wasting of water? Yes. Yeah. Page eight. Okay. Those bibs. Hydrate. I don't think my our intent was it that we're not going to be inspecting. <laughs> it's it's that. time for our weekly toilet check, everybody. Yeah. Here we are going around town. Yeah, it's not going to work. Well, another thing we could, I know it wouldn't be huge, but a lot of towns, if you upgrade to a water saving toilet, they'll give you a little rebate. Right. Yeah. So I don't, you know, we could explore an option like that. It wouldn't be huge because I know a lot of Kiowa Park probably has water saving toilets, but there's other areas where we could, you know, upgrade and save some people some money and then they could get a better water saving toilet. Right. Hey, I just put two of them in. Do I get a hundred? Oh, nice. yeah. <laughs> you, mean, you don't want that job? When I looked into that, I think it was the city of Aurora that was doing that, or maybe it was Denver, but it was up to two toilets per household every 10 years. And it was a hundred, hundred dollar credit. Okay. So oh, great. Wow. It's a, rebate on your bill so right credit your bill yeah Greeley's is 75 we'll look into that we That'd can do that idea. separately from this but it's a good thought and i know so the town of i think it was the town of aurora just last month passed that any new house from now on with a their the front yard has to be zero scaped and the backyard can only have a certain size of grass depending on the lot size and it's i don't know how desperate we are but we could you know, come to an agreement or pass something along those lines if we needed to as well to conserve water. The town has plenty of water, but we could look to better that's, provision. Yeah. That's a really good point because I, I, that was another thing we had talked about. I think the one thing that needs to be said on the record is this has nothing to do with the fact that we don't have water. We're working on ways to improve our storage capacity so that we can better serve the town. But because of the high demand, because of the drought, and because we're working on the project, we're in the situation where this is just the best case scenario to avoid a potential problem, like an actual problem. That and it's the right thing to do from a stewardship standpoint. Yeah. Hey, Bo, have you by chance talked to the fire department about if it would be too inconvenient to fill up directly at the RO from the well rather than filling up with treated water? I've not had conversations directly with the, what we call the administration of the fire department. Mm -hmm. uh, the fire personnel have expressed reservations about being forced to go farther away right. to fill up. And that uh, that is a legitimate point, I think, on on their behalf. So I think we could open a dialogue with the fire department to have them become a part of the solution as well. But again, historically, we've always let them grab the water wherever they needed to grab the water. Right. And I think our intent on having it at the RO is like, if they're fighting a grass fire, let's say the Empire grass fire, why have can them come all the way back into town? They could go to the RO. I have lots of comments, but I just have to make sure they're quality. <laughs> no, I've I've uh, I've reached out to um, Fort Morgan, uh, Brett uh, Nation, to see because I had thought I heard uh, Bo that you'd said that there was a tank um, somewhere somehow that had been decommissioned from potable use um, for possibly locating at the fire station so that they could draw from that tank rather off of the town's tank. Brett said that there is no such tank. It, it has not existed. They have uh, nothing spare. The only thing they, they do have is uh, bladders for emergency purposes, which I thought uh, might not be a bad idea for the fire district to maybe consider, which they are also having a meeting tomorrow night at 7. Did they ever sell that tank? The golf course one? Uh, yeah. Morgan Heights tank. Morgan Heights. Morgan Heights. Yeah, yeah, Morgan Heights. That's That was one of the tanks that was brought up. And then our tank, one of our 
outfits that is providing us with information on our water tanks that goes around and inspects the tanks for us said that he was aware of other tanks that were available if the municipality or the person that were or entity that was going to use it was willing to pay for moving it and they just would go ahead and remove it but those the one that uh, we were aware of was one in morgan heights but there are others around the region that are available potentially but again once they become available i don't think they stay available very long yeah so is that under consideration then for the tower still potentially grabbing one that's just decommissioned or or not really it is except the downside is most of the time from what research i've done they don't warranty it you're responsible or whoever moves it is responsible for if it can be put back together and if it can't a lot of the people that move them don't give you that warranty as well so it's right it's a high risk i haven't found one large enough and elevated enough to cover our needs okay and you're still going to have to recoat the insides so you're not saving a lot of time either yeah okay no, thanks. Tom, when you talk about recoating the insides, that don't take that long. Because all of this is epoxy paint. If you have two tanks, then you could show one tank. They, they, they sandblast it, and then they coat it, and then they coat it again. And I mean, it's only a 24-hour in-between coats. I'm just relaying what I was told about constructing a tank and reconstructing a tank it takes about the same amount of time to put it together and recoat it and paint it and epoxy it and stuff like that. It's, I'm not an, I will admit I'm not an expert on tanks. I've spread a lot of epoxy. That's why I am like I am. Right. Yeah. Oof. And I believe you. Yeah, I know you do. Hey, I got more questions too. <laughs> Yeah, I just heard the argument on it is all from, from a few residents uh, about the Morgan Heights tank specifically. And I'm, this isn't news. I think we've all talked about this at some point. So I think it's just doing our due diligence uh, is good enough for me on that one. Yeah. Is the board in agreement that I can work with Melinda and finalize this and bring it back to you at the end of the month? Well, I have one thing. Oh, um, great. So right here on page eight, under the wasting of water, where it was with the broken sprinkler head, are residents allowed to get a warning of with their broken sprinkler head? Because I know most residents work between 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. We're going to be reasonable about that. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't think the police department will go right out and write tickets for that case. I mean, they're considering it's considerate. It, it's the folks that just want to thumb their nose at the timing. That's probably the worst offenders. And exactly what is the time on, on a, on watering your yard? You can water from 6 PM to 9 a.m. Well, or 8:59. Well, 10, right 10. It's got to 10 be off currently. By 10. But in the new scheme, it would be off at nine o'clock in the morning. Which I don't think that's a big deal because no. most people water between 5:30 in the morning and 7:30 or late at night. No. Yeah. yeah. Right. I'm not well, doing I any mean, good to water. I've got two neighbors that've been watering <laughs> <laughs> whenever, and I'm not. Their neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll get this ready for your consideration. Okay. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next up, other items. Uh, November election ballot questions. If you don't mind, I'll just kind of run through these and give a break between each one and let you ask questions. In November, um, well, 
Previously, the board has talked about the potential of a 1% sales tax. Um, I think it would be good. I think we could um, potentially pull it off. Many times it does take two runs at it to make it pass. What I wanted to ask the board about is, do you still want to consider that? Um, if you do, by the end of July, we'd need to write and pass an ordinance um, with the ballot question and then turn it into the county by September 1st. What I would recommend is if we look at a sales tax increase, we dedicate it to one or more things such as parks, paving the streets, public safety, <coughs> facilities and a portion to the general fund. Typically, and I think many have heard me say this before, I don't like to dedicate it to things. I like to have that flexibility, but in this case, I think in, in the recent past, the ballot questions I've seen pass, pass because they have specified use for the money. And on top of that, they have a, what's called a sunset clause, which says after 10 years or 15 years or 25 years, that it will be re-looked at or will go away. Many times what cities and counties do is when that time comes, they ask people, hey, you've been paying for it anyway, would you extend it? And typically it's for the same thing or for something else that's a need and those typically pass. If we're going to do that, what I would recommend is that we hire a polling firm. I would look at the one similar one that, or the same one that the school used on their recent election to kind of do polling, to kind of see what the pulse of the community is for a sales tax increase and what level of percentage they might accept of different things. Um, and then that could be done, I think, in mid to late June to give us feedback as far as in July, do we pass an ordinance so that we can get that on the ballot in November? Or does it tell us don't do it because we don't have the support from the citizens and then my last question would be is, is the board committed enough on this that you would go out and start talking it up if we decided to do it and we could arm you with, here are the percentages that are being considered. Here are some of the you know, nuts and bolts facts because you can talk about it up until the time that the ballot question is set. And then you have to, only provide the factual information. Um, if you'll remember, recall the election about Kiowa Park, that's how we had to do things. Um, so that is just a question or a discussion I wanted to start and we could continue it or even continue it now to talk about percentages. Um, my thought also is that we include not only building things, but the maintenance as well. Many cases, towns have done, well, we're going to pass a percent sales tax, and we're going to use it just for building something. And then they forget, how are we going to fund the maintenance of? Um, so that gives you the flexibility to do both, and then to set policies on how you use that money. So what's the pleasure of the board about this item? Priorities, I think priorities right now. <clears throat> okay. I think and that's where, and if it's gonna be 1%, I can't see anybody turning down one cent on a dollar. I just can't see it. And as long as we communicate this well, communication is key, as long as we communicate why we want to do this and what our goal is and make sure that we can achieve this goal in a timely manner. I don't think anybody's going to push back necessarily hard. You'll get some, but if we put that, we're going to improve the roads. I think people will jump up and down. 
And I and I specifically yeah, no, we'll get out and I need to communicate it. And for the roads, I've said paving, but we could also just leave it as street improvements to allow um, for drainage and things of that nature. But yes. that's, that's up to the argument. board. So, and I would direct. I don't have any magic number, but uh, parks paving public safety facilities and the general fund, how we want to break it out. Those are the items that I think would benefit, but so when that's you say public safety, what police, police, and we can name it as police. Have you seen our budget on the police? <laughs> yes. I know. <laughs> I know. So you're seeing like maybe options or like a split, like 0.5 of that one or 50% of that 1% percent will go a certain direction. 50 the other. Correct. My only concern about doing something like that is we already don't generate that much sales tax revenue. So even at one more percent, are we going to make enough of an impact based on splitting it? Check the inflation out lately. <laughs> right. It won't even pay for the inflation. So like, but, but I mean, I, th I think that's part of the point is that like, and this is just a personal opinion, but even though there are a lot of people that were against the Fort Morgan 1% increase for the roads. But what was they already, Dave? Yeah, yeah, it was already higher. But they, I've also seen what the 1% has done. I have. Uh, to me, having a singular focus might be easier on the voter. I could be wrong on that, and the polling could show me something completely different. But if you start splitting it up and splitting it up and splitting it up, it, we're not going to reach. It, it's just like when we had, what was it, uh, Bruce? It was a few years ago, uh, that capital improvement fund, like uh, from the uh, use tax. The first year we got, first use we had it. And what did it really do? <laughs> like, we didn't really do. Where any, did it go? I mean, I, I mean, I don't even really remember where it went. Now, that's not a question for tonight. I think my point is, it's got to be enough of a dent to do something. And, and that's my only concern. It's right. We've got, we get, I'm estimating this year, I put in the budget 200,000 200, per 1% that okay. we get. We actually got 240 last year estimate. I have to look at the audit report on exactly what it was, but it's in that 200,000 range right now, but it's going up every year, but it's, you're, it's going to go up because the price of everything. Yeah. So, well, and if you think if we could get some businesses and that, stuff to come in, yep. that's where we start making that gen, that 1% starts climbing super fast. We have to go together. Commercial problem. Right. We have to go together. If we're going to improve the infrastructure in this town, the only way that's going to take place is if we're able to do something like this and pair it with commercial and other growth yeah, uh, where we can get it. And currently your 2% sales tax is split between general fund and capital improvement okay. in general. It's, I think maybe from what I've heard, people may have been sold on it as being roads, but it wasn't written into the ordinance of the ballot that way, which gives us, the flexibility. We haven't spent any of it. I hope we spend some this year on, you know, third to fifth on Main Street. Right. Um, and because I've been advocating or suggesting we start, we keep the piggy bank, so to speak, um, and, and keep saving until we've got enough to big, do a big dent on something. But I'm open to ideas and the desires of the board. I don't think we'd ever have a problem passing it if we dedicated it to roads. And yeah, I mean, me too. That, uh, that, that is the main bitch in this town is the roads. And I just heard Chapman, I guess, is going to. And it's just because there's more traffic at school. Right. And that's the bottom line. I mean, it, I don't think we'd have a problem. So if, if, with what I'm hearing, if we did polling, 
would we want to ask if it goes 100% roads or in 50%? Put a year limit on it. Uh, when I go and say it, first five years is going to go here and then bring it back to the board five years later and it can go to somewhere sun, else. That'd be, the sun, that'd be the sunset idea. Yeah. Yeah. Melinda, are you on? Yep, I'm here. Can we write a ballot language such that it gives the board flexibility to say for the X number of years or X dollars it goes to this and then they can decide if it goes to say parks. I think we'd have to name the area that it would go to potentially, but could they be that flexible or would it have to be brought back to the public? No, I mean, yeah, I think there's a way to craft the, the ordinance that way in the ballot language. I mean, just know though, once you, once you earmark things and sunset it, you know, you're stuck with that. So it really does limit your flexibility. So, um, you know, I've seen it where there's a more general ballot question and then you adopt kind of a plan um, that's more of a resolution that can be presented to the public that says these, this is our plan for this, but, you know, um, doesn't necessarily bind you um, to, to like very specific like percentages and stuff. So. I think the only hard part about that would be your, when we go talk to the public, right? So if we go, if we go general or fairly general on a ballot measure, our talking point's going to be sharp because we still have one or two real good general or big focus points. Putting a general language on the ballot could impact the swaying power to get the vote. I think we should focus on one or two things we're going to put this 1% to. That's, I agree. And that's how we communicate it, and that's what we do. Right. And then, Melinda, like in five years from now, if we wanted to dedicate that to something else, would that would that be possible with, with a council vote? Nope, you'd have to go back to the voters if you're gonna change that your mark to if you want to like yeah. So, so that's a one time deal. Yep. Could they could they write into the ballot language, Melinda, that says for the first X hundreds of thousands of dollars, it goes to roads. After that time the board could have a public hearing in an ordinance change or a resolution change that says they can have a discussion and op an option to change that percentage to increase it. I'm going to back up. If we did 50-50, let's say parks and roads or 25-75 parks and roads, could they then change the percentage mix and stay within those two funds as long as that's identified in the ballot language? Yeah. So, I, yeah, I mean, if you, yeah, include some language in the ballot, like the ballot itself that says that the board of trustees can change that from time to time, you know, like the percentage amount. Um, yeah, that, that would be acceptable. So can we not just have the ballot language say that it goes to the general fund and then we have an ordinance that appropriates that money, us, whatever much we want to take out, we take that from the general fund and appropriate it to a different fund? I think you could. You could, but I share David's concern that from the public, this board could say we want it to go 75 to roads and 25 to parks. The next board could say, we want it to go 75 parks to 25 roads. And I could, the public could get upset with that. The thing about a ballot language or about including it in the ballot language, it kind of sets a stage and requires the board to do one thing yep. or the other. And I think that's the direction we should go because that's how we're going to communicate it. And that's how we're going to get, that's this how past. Get, that's how, that's how we're going to get the vote. If you go general and, and if, just say we talk about it all the time, people watch this meeting or they don't or engage in community activity. If I'm not involved in this and I get a general ballot measure with me not really knowing the details, yeah. am I going to vote yes on that? No. <laughs> right? I'm going to want more. And so I think where you win people over is by putting it point blank, even if that means we have to go back to the voters. 
you know, five, 10 years down the line, you know, I would feel more comfortable and accountable measure to say, we are committed to this period. It says so right here in this measure. And that, that would make, normally I wouldn't even say that because I understand the, the benefit of the flexibility in this case, we've been talking about this since I was on the board the first time it's, we got to, we got to do something. Okay. So what two items would you like in a couple of scenarios for percentages to think about polling? Definitely roads. Yeah, roads, I understand. Roads, roads are in there because, you know, we're not even, we don't have any good roads right now. And now we're talking about expanding the road from uh, the Catholic church out to pee. Where's that money going to come from? The Thomases have to pay for half of it we in their the development. Staff. The West staff and then, <laughs> and then ourselves then we need to help chip in on the staff. Will the county get in on that then too? I need to definitively define who owns that road. If I think we own it from what I've been told, I'm trying to work with Diamondback to decipher some of the county maps, but I don't think the county with their financial situation would chip in. If you think about it both, the gravel road out here, once you get out of town limits, that is taken care of by Morgan County. The rut road out here was by the Baptist Church. That there is strictly county. But if they own, if that's all county ground on the east side, it looks like to me that they... It, it depends on how the annexation was mapped out. We've had this discussion, right? Like yeah, seven months ago, and we it was, and it was it a policing thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I, I, I still have nightmares still, about that. Talk. I mean, get, getting back that I, I just brought that up. I mean, that's what we need to be looking yeah. in the future too. Is right. It's just not the existing roads are bad. We're gonna have we got, and even out there from P to your apartments, that's. Somehow we got to pay for that. Right. Well, and all the roads in Kiowa Park belong to the town. They're at not part point, of the HOA. Have to keep those roads. So at some point, that's granted, that's a long ways down the road, but long term, that's all part of the town as well. Right. Yep. Yeah, I think, did we ever say anything about a second? <laughs> the, 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 I would throw yeah. parks out there. I think there. parks would be. Yeah. I'd have to go with water, guys, because we talked about businesses aren't coming in because we don't have the water facilities or the infrastructure set up. I, I mean, so, use it as a tool to bring people in. You're, you guys are saying you need businesses to come in. You got to show it. You know, we've talked about it. Show something. Yeah. But it also takes money to show something. Yeah. But, but I tell you, we're always going to have water issues. And I think to, to David's point about not dividing everything up and not putting any money towards anything because it's all being divided up. It goes back to what I had mentioned earlier about having impact fees. I think if we need the, the parks and the, the roads and everything, I think where you get that is impact fees on your permits, not necessarily splitting that all up on a 1% sales tax. Thank you. Yeah. Because clearly there's a need for all those areas. So, you know, that's, that's what Kingsburg yeah, and everyone else does. about that, Brian. Mm -hmm. Kingsburg, you, yeah. have you, have you seen their list? Oh yeah. It's expensive. <laughs> Try to build there is expensive. Okay. But I feel like that's where you get the revenue for those areas, not dividing it all up on a 1% sales tax. Yeah. So I think we pick our main area, whether it be roads or whatever, and that's what it go to. But the impact fees, that is that's something that's been brought up and it right. And I've I have asked around about some firms doing impact fees, haven't come up with that. I'm gonna put out a call on my manager's list list serve and see who's done one recently and who did it because josh with northern engineering is going to get me a proposal but diamondback doesn't do that work and when they when talk to rcac last they don't do that work either i went and got i i went down to kingsburg just when i first got on the council four years ago 
And I got, I went down there and I says, I'm going to build a 1500 square foot house. And I said, what, what would it cost me to build that? And they give me a list of all the impact fees. And I mean, they didn't miss nothing. And I think they've that increased. I don't know what they are. I'm yeah. Sure. I looked at them when we were talking about raw water rates and I just heard from um, the bank when they went, they're getting ready to do one in, in Kingsburg and they were surprised by how costly it was to get their permit through Kingsburg compared to Wiggins. I think you said they even had one for a new town hall. Yes. Or, an or town hall facility. Yeah. So they have one for that's where I got the <laughs> that's where I got the facility idea because I had not seen that. I've seen water, I've seen roads, and it's typically impact fees are used for um, funding things that are used by all, not just one development. So back if I could bring us back around to sales tax, <laughs> one item. Roads, or do we want item to... streets? Okay, I think keep it simple. It'll pass. Okay, I mean, do you? I know, I know people are gonna are gonna grow. Well, they're, they're gonna grow, but I hear it all the time. What are they gonna do down on Main Street? Hey, haven't you seen the orange steaks? <laughs> haven't you backed <laughs> over one of them orange steaks yet? <laughs> they, they may groan but then they go to brighton bromley rain, lane right there and in taxes are outrageous there oh, you know so nine still, still very center still very 12 percent yeah yes. it's yeah, unreal it's, right um i would still recommend we do some polling just uh i would agree and it'll be a simpler item of one uh, percent all going to roads how long do you want it to be 10 years 20 years 25 years 30 years I would say at least 10 to 15. I would agree. Not longer. I'll do some math. And when I bring it back, I'll have some options. So that's, that's right. You know what? That's a good, that, that Chris made a good point. So uh, do we, did we ever look at how much it would cost to pave curb and gutter the town? It's obviously several million dollars, right? <laughs> Right, ten to 12. twelve. Ten to twelve million dollars. You're gonna have to change drainage and because drainage is step number one. We know that we right. want to get that right. So to me, that says that's how we dictate how long the the that we do it for. Yeah, but how long is it gonna take to get a yeah to do an rough actual estimate. capital improvement plan? Which is one of my many things is. Probably, but I think we could get a rough estimate. Yeah, I'm not saying we have to go over the top. Just right, yeah, need to have it. Some a ballpark, of ballpark image to look at. But when we explain this to people, we're they're going to be like, "Well, how soon are you going to start working on this?" Then, when we get the money, that's why we're getting one percent. We have some money, yeah, right. And, and what I rely on, we've got about four hundred thousand okay. dollars in that fund. No, but I, we can start working on some of the main ways. If we're able to get a little bit coming. Yeah. And I think if we, if we got this to pass and we started showing that we're working on it, I think people would stay on board and yeah. And uh, once, once you have a, another way f towns have done it is once you have a dedicated revenue stream, they've taken it out to a vote of the public and sometimes it's done at the same time. And we might want to look at it. Is the town allowed to bond against that revenue stream so that you can borrow money to do things sooner and yeah. pay it back with that revenue? Yeah. Hmm. That's a good possibility. That's a good, that's a good possibility. Yeah. I mean, that would give us, it would buy us the time for that growth that we want to right. experience even further, increase our, our revenue to pay it back and then also have more money to balance for later. Jerry, know. what's your thoughts? My thoughts is we want to bring businesses in. This is your way to bring them in. You got to use the tool. It's a tool. If they pass it, that's great. Yeah. You know, if we need road, well, we all know we need roads. Yeah. But what's underneath the roads, sewer line and so forth, that's got to be taken care of also at the same time. Wouldn't that be part, would that be part, part of, of the roads? Infrastructure like that? You could define it like that. 
and you would I would recommend you to find it in the ballot. Yeah. But also one thing, we've got the capital improvement one percent, and you could just take roads out of that one and just use it for pipes for, and for drains. Pipes and drains. So that's actually a good idea. So we're trying to make money. Percent. We've got to get money. That's what it takes. Oh yeah, we do. No, good point. So it gives you two percent for those large Water, capital roads. Well, for infrastructure, I would say drain. I would call it drainage, because your pipes can fund out of the sewer fund and water fund. Granted, those need help as well, but you can also transfer money from those capital improvements to the drainage, to the pipes. We just have to craft the ballot language correctly. Yeah. Basically, all, all our drainage is above ground except for underneath Main Street and the one that comes from Don Johnson's up there. Right. Yep. That's the only thing we got. In underground. Kiowa Park. And Kiowa Park. I, I'm... They've got storm drainage in the, in the ground. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I should have known. <laughs> and we're getting ready to do our first drainage project in conjunction with the bank building the stormwater detention pond on yep. the um, sewer uh, plant property. And that should take care of the bulk of the area north of central. So that's a start. Yeah, I mean, it, it don't make no difference as long as it, as long as it drains. Right. And we've done, are they finished out at 5th? So 5th Avenue should not become a lake again. Should not. It's going to drain towards Don't the... Don't go off the side though, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's designed to drain to the retention pond at Susan Suzanne. And we're also going to work on the small lakes that form at... Um, Third and Becky and those areas and fix those and then fix the area about Second Avenue with some simple um, make sense grading by Tom and Larry. Okay. Um, I'll work with Melinda and get some information together and we'll be talking again about this in June. Sorry, I had one more question. Yes. Um, the use tax is a whole nother can of worms, so I won't get into that, but is that something that has to be on the November election ballot or can that be an ordinance at any time? As far as changing it? You want to increase it? No. <laughs> I, <laughs> Come on. I, personally, I don't like the use tax. I, I think it'd be better as using that 1% on a permit fee or something or an impact fee, just because I feel like a lot of times people get charged twice because they don't understand it and don't know it. So they pay for the cost on their permit when they pay for it, and then they go and buy the material and then pay for the tax twice. We don't have to put that on to change our policy. We don't have to put that on the ballot. Only if we want to change the percentage amount. Okay, I never heard of it. That's yeah. interesting because you you pay for it here, and then you're supposed to take your receipt to Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever you go. Right, and they're supposed to not charge you the the city yeah. portion of the yeah. tax. But none of them know how to do it, and you end up paying it anyway. Yeah. I done it on eighteen. Instead of a fifty dollars fence permit, you're paying for a roof, two hundred dollars. And we, so I paid we've looked, and I went to, uh, I, yeah. well, I went to the roofer, and I said, "Hey, I've already paid the use tax on it." And he just looked at, yeah, it. yeah, they have no clue. Use tax. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I like the premise of it and generating revenue that way. I just think that maybe it could be. And Melinda and I have discussed it and we haven't figured an easier way to do it yet um i know in every town i've been manager in, they've had the same sales and use tax some towns have an issue some towns don't have an issue so can we look at that potentially in august or september just meeting That's timing wise? Yeah. and keep me keep me honest and remind me about it Okay, great. Okay, so um, just to recap, and I'm going to make myself a note, 1%, oh, sunset date, we'll determine that, but I'm going to recommend at least 30 years because we've got a lot of projects to do and it's a lot of money, but we'll 
try to get an estimate so we've got some definitive is it okay if i'm not here yes <laughs> 30 I, I may not be here either <laughs> <laughs> me and jerry might have a problem seeing that <laughs> i don't want to be here in 30 years not at this spot <laughs> you these guys? No. <laughs> oh, come on. Yeah, as long as, long yeah, as I'm still on planning and zoning, I'll stay further. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The next question is um, and Deb's going to put more information together on this um, for the next work session, but the pr thought of moving the trustee elections from April to November. It does two things. It um, saves money because we can coordinate the election with the county and then also saves Deb from going crazy because she's buried. So it's a staff resource thing as well. And just wondered, wanted to ask the board if you want us to pursue that. I think yeah. we yes. get a better yeah. voter <laughs> turnout. A lot yeah. of people a lot like better voter in April. Yeah. That's the other plus the uh, for anyone that might be wondering if you're up for re-election in two years your term gets extended from april to november or the end of the year or january and whenever we decide you take office i think that because i think that's okay. a good idea because a lot of people they don't okay yep they do they don't need to blow it off too. okay great uh the next item just an Kind of a good news. We've signed the contract for body worn cameras. Uh, they're supposed to start getting some training this month along with the county. But the chief also secured an additional $25,000 grant from the same pot of money that he first got it from. Um, he just threw in the request. Uh, he was encouraged to, and some towns didn't get any. Uh, the, even, the, even the first time, and we ended up getting a little over fifty, almost sixty thousand dollars. So it's wow. almost paid for. Uh, we're wow. we're waiting on the funding to actually come to us and be awarded, but the preliminary is that uh, we have been our grant has been approved. That's awesome. That's huge because we were That's trying awesome. to figure out the budget part, and I right. remember Chad sure. sitting there. Does the chief know how to get yeah. grants for other stuff too? Yeah, can we get? <laughs> See, listen to get. Good, See, listen to get to it. it yeah. Done a good job. So, um, the next item. <laughs> <laughs> the next time when I wanted to bring up, and I believe you've all seen the same CML newsletter and knowledge now um, publications, but it's called the Family Opt Out. If you recall, the voters in Colorado approved Proposition 118 in November 2020, which um, says that employees can get up to 12 weeks of uh, paid family leave, either for themselves or taking care of someone. A part of this is, and it provides employees up to 12 weeks by comparison, our employees get currently get 48 to 96 hours per year, um, depending if they've been here less than 10 years or 11 years and greater. Um, the cost to the town uh, in the employees roughly 0.45% of the salary uh, for the town that would be in addition of, and I just ran rough numbers, about 2,300 a year currently, and the employees would have to match that. Um, in the recent information that I've read from CML, um, if the employer opts out, the employee can still opt in. Um, many places are opting out because of either the rules and regs have not been written for family, and there are some penalties for the town financially if it's miscalculated, mm. um, not for the employees. And you can, if you don't opt out and it's an automatic opt in, 
you have to wait, I believe it's three years before you can opt in again. But if you opt or before you can opt out, but if you opt out, you can opt in the following year. Um, many munis, as I said, are opting out either to decide how the rules and regs are going to be written or their leave policies are such that they already exceed, meet or exceed what the Family um, Act would give them. Um, if we're going to take any action, we, need, we should do it soon. Yeah. I would recommend by the end of June. I would recommend opting out right now and giving notice to employees as well. That gives us the flexibility to opt in at a later date. Um, so I think it's wiser to do it that way. When I bring this back to you in June, I would provide some of the comparisons of what it would cost a town, what it would cost each employee. Is there some options um, that we can look at as well, including do we want to maybe consider changing our leave policy, but that would be up to the board. And Melinda, do you, do you want to add anything or do you think I covered it pretty well? Yeah, I mean, I think you covered it. Um, I do know that um, the state has just recently clarified that we do have until the end of the year to opt out. And they are planning on providing some guidance and some additional documentation for governments. Um, um, about like the notices that have to go out to employees. So I've been recommending that my other clients wait until until those um, documents have been published to opt out just so we can, so we don't have to reinvent the wheel um, on those documents. Yeah, I was unclear if we actually had until the end of the year or the 180 days before the end of the year, so. Yeah, they just clarified, yeah, CML had originally um, told everybody they needed to opt out by July, but um, the state clarified that, no, we have at least until December 2022. So okay. we'll bring it back a little bit later in the fall, but I just wanted to give you the heads up that that's happening. But you said the employer can, or I'm sorry, you said the employee can still opt in? Yes. On their own? Okay. Yes. But they have to pay in for an entire year before they can uh, get the benefit. Get the benefit of it. Right. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Thank you. And I'll outline the, based on the information that they've provided, how much employees would get as well. It's not, hey, if I opt in, I get the exact salary that I've got and, or I'm receiving per week. It kind of depends on what they're earning. Okay. Um, just a friendly reminder that uh, park cleanup is Saturday from 8.30 to about 11. And then we'll uh, burn some burgers afterwards. Uh, he, and Dave, I'm just kidding. David <laughs> did a great job of cooking burgers. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> we're going to concentrate on Teats Park. And if there's overflow, we'll send them to High Plains Park. Uh, Bo and I met with Cynthia Pope. She's kind of leading the charge on this uh, last night. So we've got a list of tasks that we've got identified for volunteers and hopefully some tasks in our back pocket if um, more and more um, volunteers show up than what we're expecting. But uh, I think we're ready to go and uh, be a good time. So if you want to join us, we would welcome to have trustees out. So be great. I mean, it's only for two and a half hours plus having a burger afterwards. So I just wanted to remind folks about that. And then on other little items that just wanted to tell you where we're at on the Main Street curb and gutter, You've seen the stakes. I've talked to the Ledfords. Um, we're the other one too. Pardon? And the other one too. I haven't talked to her, but Bo has talked to someone related to her and she knows the information. Um, 
Bo is getting confirmation on the one bid that we've gotten. We've asked for a few others, but they have not gone back to us for others. Um, so we're going to confirm that bid, see what the concrete prices are, and see if we can get that scheduled. I'm ready to go with that one bid because no one else is giving us bids. Um, How many times did you just advertise with that once, Tom? Or? Bo were around and talked to people and called people formally numerous times. And they're just, too busy. they're just too busy. Yeah. Um, Burlington Northern Santa Fe, the sewer replacement. The update I got yesterday is the manholes and pipe are scheduled for the end of May to be delivered to the contractor. So we're hoping work starts the first part of June. Um, and that's a pretty quick project. Should be done within a list, less than a month unless something surprises us surprises us can i ask you a question on that yes sir uh will that be a new bore a new sleeve new bore yes new everything yes i'm not gonna have to close the road going across the railroad tracks right no no <laughs> go out <laughs> 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 um we've already talked about the emergency interconnect um on the usda project um we have proposed for the water project that it be broken down into nine tasks and the first phase would be the first two tasks of putting the tank in and making improvements to the booster station and we've made that formally request to USDA. Um, my, the project representative I'm dealing with out of Ray has sent that to her state engineer, and we hope to have some type of indication next week during our meeting on if they're going to go ahead and go with that and release the money so we can start on the tank portion of the project. Um, the Areas that we broke it down just to, to let you know is we got the elevated storage tank is task one. Task two is the booster station. Task three would be the blending station. That's the green SAM filter to give us that option. Um, we'd also um, improvements at the existing RO plan, adding a skid, adding capacity. Um, the RO injection well, and I'm also looking at another alternative for that, um, that I don't know if it'll be cheaper or not, but someone suggested we look at oil field injection instead of use, you know, where we truck it to them. Transportation's awful high right now because of diesel, but it's good to at least look into it. And as I mentioned before, I made the plea and we, um, Bo and Richard Hopp took samples of the South Platte, the wells at the RO and the brine were, if the fly doesn't live in the South Platte, I'm gonna start rattling the cages up at the state of letting us do a different test. I don't know how far I'll get, but we'll try it. See, see if he lives upstream from there. Well, that's one of my arguments is if the metro area have cleaned the South Platte up to the level of the South Platte at Waterton Canyon, I wouldn't have the problem down. Here's my theory. So um, the task number six would be any of the town water system improvements, i.e. the pipes and major things that we haven't already fixed along the route, but like ex like improving two inch water lines to four inch or six inch like they should be. Um, and then an additional South Platte well in task seven, doing something with the Thomas wells would be task eight and task nine would be augmentation water over at the Glassy Farm. And that all total right now in our estimates and granted these are I've got a high contingency is 20, almost $28 million. And that 
one scares me, but USDA has said we can't, you guys can't afford that all at once. So trying to break it up into phases. As far as Thomas's wells, Bo, you know, they don't put out that much water, do they? I mean, they, just from what I remember, and that's not a lot, but I don't think they put out that much water. But that would, are they gonna have Greenway there at the farm? Is there gonna be a, a place for, you know, for parks? Like the common area. area. Uh, plan includes uh, large stretch of grass area and in the, in the back they have. Yeah, by that retail. I'd have to, yeah, I'd have to look at it again. But that well there would, may well be usable for that. And one thing that we're contemplating is asking them in their future phases and just checking to see if it's possible and what the cost would be that they lay purple pipe in. At the same time, that gives us the ability to require homeowners to use non-potable water for irrigating lawns. But we may have to contribute to that as well, but it's, it's worth looking into. You know, I can't figure out, and you've been to Hill Rose. How can they, they've got it up there. They have got, they've got irrigation that they're, that they're using. Now, I don't know if it's coming from the sewage plant. They don't have no paved roads, maybe Main Street, but they, they do have, irrigated water up there non-pot water they have and that's they got the signs on them how they afforded it i don't know let's see I if i can gotta, find out you got to look at the long-term picture when you put that in it's you pay for it up front the long term they probably looked at the long term and saw well if we spend the money now to put it in it's going to benefit us down the road and that's probably why they did it, because look at how much water restrictions are and stuff like that. If you could get a well to produce and you could run non-potable, you're better off. But their other water, I don't know if it's coming from quality or... I think, I thought Hill Rose was on quality. So they're, they're using their town well for... Yes, for non-potable, hmm. which is smart. I'll look at, I'll see if I can find out some information about Hill Rose. Um, and then for the sewer project with USDA, we're looking at, and I know I've gone, I've given you scenarios out the wazoo on this one, but I think we've finally settled on doing the um, three, doing it in three phases doing the recharge ponds out at Knievel first. So we, in the finishing the, our making our payment for the pipeline out there. So that can allow us to start utilizing the South Platte wells in the recharge basins. And then the second phase would be the sewer plant upgrade itself. And then the last phase would be running the effluent pipeline out to the recharge ponds. Because the most important thing from the water rights standpoint is being able to use those South Platte wells. And if we need to augment it with the lock wells that are out there to get our AUG plan up and running. And it's, if we can do that sooner rather than later, that's the best scenario. And it doesn't make us rely on hearing back from CDPHE on the permit limitations for the sewer plant discharge. So that's what we're getting ready to put together. Something, if we start blending water though, if we go to augmentate, you know you know the plan? If we yes. augmentate anything from the enclosed basin, we are gonna have. That's, that's why I'm leaving the sewer plant where it's at. So we can have that option to split that discharge flow. Uh, we talked about the bulk water. We talked about north or the pot, non-potable water for bar, parks and ball fields. The, one of the last things is what I'd like to get a read from on the board is 
we need to have electrical run out to Kiowa Park, one for a light out there, and second, you know, a street light at the park itself. And the second would be for ir uh, clock, irrigation clock for the grass out at the park. And just want your thought. I think I know the answer, but the cost kind of has a big variable depending on how we do it. If we follow our code, which I recommend we do, we need to underground it. To underground it is going to run anywhere from eleven to thirteen thousand dollars, but that sets us up. Is that with a trencher? That's with the REA actually putting in the line. Does REA have to put that line in? Uh, if they're going to do it in accordance with our ordinance that's already in place, yes. Um, and that's the way they would prefer to do it. But the other unique thing is it will be primary power out to that entire area from which we can then run secondary power to additional lights, bathrooms, irrigation control, a number of other things. Future expansion. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you're spending a little bit more now, but then it, it builds for the future. Well, I just seen some. I just seen a, a trencher and he got $3 a foot is what he charged. And he done it in, that was 425 feet. He done it in about three hours. I don't know off the top of my head what that distance was, but basically they'll be bringing it from the north side of P across the park to where the playground area is. And then from there, we have the ability, we already have the secondary conduit run on the west side of the west side of Johnson. Mm -hmm. And then as we eventually fill in that area, we'll have the ability to go from that central location and out. But we missed the opportunity years ago to do a bore off of Johnson and get over to the, the playground. So this was the option that the REA recommended and that said would be within compliance with our ordinances. Okay. Yeah, fight ordinance. For the... Um, what I like to would like to get to put together is a budget amendment to handle the electrical out of Kiowa Park and the um, non-pot blended type station from the South Wells and the improvements that we're doing at the South Wells and at the RO plant um, and have the board consider that. And um, I can put together draft so that we can talk about it at the June work session and then prove it at the June meeting if the board is in agreement. Something I'd like in June too, if we could, is just to go over our budget so far this year, That'd be just great. to see. Wherever. And I know you give us one every month. I know that. Right. But deeper just, dive. Just to take some time and go through it. We can do that. And that's just to see where, where, where we're at. And it's good timing because I want to start doing budget after the audit in June so that we're looking at it earlier. So, but Thank we'll you. definitely do that. Also, in at the May meeting, if you'll recall, I mentioned from about the audit at the last meeting, we're $40,000 above what I budgeted last year in the general fund for expenses. That's not horrible. The audit the auditor thought that was great and really close, but technically I should do, or we should do a budget amendment to cover that like we did for the water last year. But um, so we'll do that at the end of May as well. So I just want to give you the heads up on that. And then the last item, well, not the last item, another heads up is we're finally closing on the sale, of that little strip land at Knievel. And we've done a modification to allow us to continue to use the stock well as long as we own that land. As I figured out too late, um, no one else caught it either. That sale of that little strip of land to Mike gives him the well 
the stock well. And he's working with me and has worked with me that, okay, we can still have access to that for that area that we use for green, that we lease out and by chance to him um, north of the uh, Bijou ditch. So I'm bringing that back to you so we can finish that closing nine months later. So, um, and then I also want to remind you and those who haven't responded, the CML district meeting is on the 26th in Yuma and we need to uh, register with CML by the 17th. Um, it's $25. The town can cover that, but let me know if you want to register and um, we can register and you get an email that we've done that and we'll just take a check over. And with that, I'm going to shut up. One more reminder about the uh, conference, the 21st. Oh. Of the <laughs> yeah, the CML conference is the 21st through that Friday of June. I know I need to get the mayor some information on that, but uh, anyone else wants to go, um, one, we need to get you registered with CML. I'll have to confirm when the drop dead date is. Um, also, the host hotel at the Beaver Room Resort is probably already booked out, um, but there are plenty of close by locations for lodging if anyone's interested. Okay. Anybody else have anything? No, I'm gonna leave them alone. <laughs> <laughs> no, you won't. I gotta save it up for next time. Okay. <laughs> and I, this is over about, this is good. Good timing and thank you. Time is 831 and the town of Wiggins board of trustees work session is now adjourned. You got your work session timing like almost to the T. I, I, uh, you did. Some days I through. do good. <laughs> some days I do good. I feel like I just do good. Oh.